Hey, kia ora, Helen Brown's here coming to you live from Mesa in Arizona. Hope you're having a super fantastic sparkling day. Well, it has been a very interesting day. Today is Tune Up Tuesday, so how did your tune ups go? Did you make any slight tweaks, any slight changes, any major changes? Um, how did you get on with your with tuning up your business, your life, just anything within your day? Um, so how did that go? Let us know in the comments below because we'd love to um, celebrate your wins with you on all of that. Um, did you get to watch the video that we attached to this morning's video about the um, the presentation from Admiral William um, McRaven about um, about making your bed and the top t and the ten principles he learned as a C as a Navy SEAL that he applied that can be applied to life? Um, did you get to watch that? Um, it's a it's a great great speech. It's um yeah it was it's I've watched it a few times. I really really enjoy that um, good motivational one. Um, so today has been a very interesting day. Um, let's see, what have I got up there? How you show up. Okay, so how you show up. So I had a very interesting thing happen today in that, um, now our sites are about 50 feet deep and about 40 to 45 feet wide. So they're wide sites. And you have a gravel portion, which is where the RV sits. Then you have a concrete area for, the, for your patio and then a concrete area which is your um, where you park your car or your tow vehicle, um, and then and that's how it goes down the line. And um, so the the RV on my passenger side. Um, actually, going to back up a little bit. So when you're in a when you're in a campground, and um, you need your vehicle washed, you need repairs done, all of that. The campground usually gives you um, like a list of approved vendors. Now the approved vendors are people who have paid to be advert. To advertise within the campground and paid for the right to be in the campground because in some cases in some places they don't allow anybody but the approved vendors to be in the campground if you want anybody who's not an approved vendor you have to let the management know when they go check in the office and all that blah 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 um but most of the time the approved vendors are pretty good um and so what you do is that you um is that most people will sit and you watch and you observe. Now I've been here since the 30th of September, so we're talking three and a half months we've been here. And you notice that certain vendors appear over and over and over again to for repairs, for detailing, um, mechanical issues, all of that sort of stuff that, that revolves around life in an RV. And it's the kind of like when you go to get home maintenance done, you get the same things done on RVs and things like that. They could be um, repairs inside the RV, it could be repairs outside the RV, to the engine, to the generator whatever um you know finding with um helping stop the leaks from um plugging up helping clear up the black tanks the gray tanks all of that sort of stuff so there's a whole range of services and they and most campgrounds will have anywhere from two to three um vendors that the person that gets to choose as to who they want to call up so they're not just driving everybody to one traffic they spread it around a little bit so what you do is that you watch all the vendors that come around and especially if it's like detailing because i was thinking of getting sparkles cleaned and you know washed and polished and um so i mean every time we go for a walk during the more um if we're late morning um if we go for a walk at lunchtime or if we go for a walk in early evening you're always seeing these vendors around the place and there's one detailing van that comes up that shows up time and time again and i've seen their work their work looks amazing the rvs when they're finished look really really good um, and so I was sort of like, oh, and then the other thing you can do to help, um, make up your decision as well is go and talk to the RV owners about their experience with that particular vendor. Oh, you know, I noticed that you had XYZ detailer out the other day and I see that they've done a great job. What, did, what was your experience with them? You know, asking for, asking for the verbal referral or the verbal testimony. Testimonies are awesome. Word of mouth in campgrounds is amazing. Um, for finding the vendors and things. So if there are any vendors out there watching this, please take note of what is about to happen. So one of the things that I've been um, taught about in the mastermind group that I have is about how you show up. You, you know, how you show up is that the same as when, you know, how, and not only how do you show up for a meeting or an event or anything like that, but also who are you, excuse me, when nobody is watching. So what happened today is the, and today was just to, get, now I normally have the door open with the, and pinned back with the, and hooked back with the screen door open. 
to allow the fresh air to come in. I normally have the window on the driver's side open and um, and I get this nice cross breeze going through and it's been like that the last few days I've been able to have that. But of course today's been a lot cooler. We've had showers every now and again. Yeah, we actually had rain. Oh, which reminds me of one other thing. Hang on, I'm going to write this down. Precipitation. Precipitation. Okay, we'll get back to that one in a minute. I just don't want to forget. Um, try not to squirrel. And, um, oh yeah, that's right. No, it's squirrel. Okay, that just triggered another thing. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, back on story. And um, so this vendor who I've seen around the park a lot. Now, compare, I have seen this particular vendor for detailing the outside of a vehicle around this RV park way more than any other detailer. I have seen other details, but this one I have seen like way more. And the RVs always look fantastic when they finish. So the guys do a really, really good job. Now, one of the things we get to in our mastermind group is how we show up. How do you show up? How is... Um, you know, do you always show up grumpy? Do you always show up happy? Um, how you dress is another portion of it. It's just how you as the package shows up. And so when you're looking at vendors as well, especially detailing vehicles, what do their vehicles look? What do their vehicles look like? Are they a product of the product? You know, if you're out there and you're promoting weight release products, are you actually using them and having success um, with them? Because that is going to help you sell more of the product if you are a product of the product you know if you're into skincare and makeup are you actually using your products um if you're um into um total mind blank <laughs> sorry if you you know if you're a hairstylist what does your hair look like how well are you taking care of your hair um you know so you are you a product of the of your own product? So you always check the vehicle. This vehicle looks immaculate every time it comes into the, into the campground. It looks it still looks immaculate at the end of the day. So everything about this is like checking off check boxes within the things. So they pull up. They kind of go in front of. The, they start off sort of in front of the RV next to me, but mainly over my driveway area. So where I would put my tow car. And I thought. Well, that's not really fair because they've got a whole, you know, they've got 40 to 45 feet across the front of this other RV site that they could be parking in. And um, so they get out and they start doing their thing. And it's a, it's the boss man and, um, and two employees. And so the two employees get in and they start working. These guys were hard workers. You could see it straight off. Boss man, not so much. Now, all the details that I have seen in campgrounds are either single person operation or there's one per the person who owns the operation plus one or two workers and all of them pitch in like they you know they're like rolling their sleeves up they're getting in there they're doing the thing they're making they're trying to get this done as quickly and as professionally as they can um this boss guy didn't lift a finger to help he appeared to be busy he looked busy but his app if you actually watched him he wasn't doing anything Whenever I saw him, he wasn't doing anything. He was always like this, always like this, on the phone. Um, or he was watching what they were doing. Um, I very rarely saw him go and get stuff out of the van. Um, his guys would, if they needed something, they would get down off the ladders they were on, they would go to the van, get what they needed, and get back up on the ladder again. Instead of just asking, hey, can you go grab me what? Not from the van. They did it themselves. Um, it's also like, okay, um, this is... A little red flag going up where you've got somebody who supervises and doesn't really roll up their sleeves um now you know i know some companies work a little differently but like i said and on my travels across the thing and i've now stayed at 50 i've, I've stayed in the almost two years i've had sparkles we've stayed in 57 campgrounds so there's a lot of stuff you get to see I have yet to see, and today was the first time I ever saw it out of 57 campgrounds, it was the first time I had saw, seen a detail vehicle turn up, the workers get to work, and one guy just stands there and does basically nothing. He just basically watches um, and doesn't help. And I was like, okay. And then I start, and so I'm sitting here and I'm working, and I start hearing the shouting. I thought, and remember, I've got my doors and windows closed. Big tip. RVs are not very soundproof for noise coming in and out. So if you're in your RV shouting, 
everybody around you within hearing distance will hear it. There is some person somewhere, and I'd love to find out what, exactly where they are, but at midnight, on some nights, we'll start playing their bass guitar. Well, you only hear the doo -doo 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 of his bass guitar. I'd love to find out where he is, um, even though if he thinks he's being quiet. I'm always conscious of the noise that's on my TV. And there are times I've gone and stood out, had the TV on, and I've gone and stood outside to see, you know, how loud is it compared to when I'm sitting there and when I'm outside because I don't want to disturb my neighbors. This is why I like it when I have empty sites on either side of me. But right now, our little row of seven, our little row of nine sites is all full. Um, so I have to be conscious of the noise. And I have to be very conscious at night too of Zephy running up and down the RV, especially if she gets her Kong. Because the Kong, if you don't know, it's a hard rubber toy that they have at your stuff full of treats. She will toss that thing and it makes a heck of a thud. And people hear the thudding and her running up and down. So um, I try to do quiet games with her in the evenings when she's at her most energetic. Doesn't always work, but I do try. And the neighbors are pre-warned. If you hear any do 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 type noise like running up and down, I said it's the dog running up and down the RV. So that they know. Well, this guy gets on it. So I look out the window. This guy is now strutting up and down on my site. So when you rent a site, that is yours. You the rule on the campground is, and most people have it written down for the rules for the campground, is you don't go walking through other people's sites. If it's an occupied site, stay out. It's like walking into somebody's front yard or backyard. It's basically what it's like. Um, and so he's walking up and down my site on my pavement out there, my patio, my driveway. He's walking up and down there with his phone like this, having a con no, it wasn't really having a conversation. He was yelling at the person on the other end of the phone. He started calling him a lazy person, and I'm like, oh my god, is he talking to his kids? Who would talk to the, but why the heck is he calling his kids at this hour of the day when he's on a job, and he's walking on the, you know, on this, on my, on my site, not the site next door where they're doing the work, and there's like, there's like four or five sites across the road, they're empty, there's a whole row immediately behind us that's empty, yet he's walking up and down on my site. And he starts calling this guy um, a lazy blob, a lazy, lazy slob, and all this sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh my god, is he talking to his kids in that way? And just telling him to get out there and just blow it, blow it back on. And then through the, con the conversation, remember, my windows and doors are closed. I'm hearing this, plus the response. on both sides there was a lot of threatening going on on both sides um they, it, they were each offering to call the police on the other person and it turns out he was actually talking to his neighbor something from the neighbor's side had blown onto his property and he was telling the guy to blow it back onto his own property because he was not paying his landscapers to clean up his neighbor's mess or something like that um because so i heard about blowing things around and his landscapers are not clearing up his mess and um, and telling and the name calling and all of that and he was getting within three to four feet of my door I shut down something in the way his manner was something in his manner in his delivery of his voice and everything else it triggered something in me and I shut down now usually in a crisis situation I am normally pretty calm if you watched this morning's video you would have heard about the time that um in a crisis situation, I'm calm. This was not happening today. I something triggered me and I shut down. And I didn't even think. I did not. I wasn't even thinking clearly. I didn't even think to pick up my phone and call secure the call the campground security or call the police or whatever. I didn't even think to do that. It triggered me and I shut down. It took me after he finished his call. And I was like, okay, that vendor is now not even on the blacklist. He's in the black hole. I am not even going to approach his business about coming and cleaning sparkles at all. Despite the fact that his workers do a fantastic job, he just ruined everything. You never know who is listening or who is watching you at any point in time when you're out there. And whatever actions you have when you think nobody's watching could reflect on you and your business and how much business you get. So if I ever, so if I ever need sparkles washed while I'm here in the park because I'm thinking about getting it done, I am not going to be hiring his company at all. Nobody know how, not after that display. I felt threatened. And 
and sparkles being somebody who's traveling by myself well that's the only human traveling by myself there's only a couple of places um out of 57 campgrounds where i did not feel safe one of them was just after i got zephy and we were going out doing our midnight walks two or three times a night and we were at this campground um during the weekend it was fine because i got her on a saturday so saturday night sunday night find lots of vehicles lots of rvs around monday night the place is like a ghost town and we're out in the middle of nowhere there's no street lighting around in this place and you're starting to hear things rustling through the trees and stuff that are around the area and i'm sort of like i looked at zephy and said you're done we're going inside and she bolted, basically bolted for the door um so there was situations like that not knowing that this was the type of park that was really really packed on the week and empty throughout um, on the weekend and empty throughout the week um there was one park i would not have felt safe going out and if i and i said to my mum and, and my mum and dad were with me and i said if i came to this place by myself i wouldn't have stayed i would have left um it i was happy i had my parents with me <laughs> but there's only been a couple of places that when i've been out at night with zephy on the odd night that she goes out where i have not felt safe walking around the campground um this is the first time i felt unsafe during the day 57 campgrounds and the first time i have felt safe during unsafe during the day um i probably may i may go and say something to management about this guy's behavior because i think it was completely inappropriate for him to even be having that conversation i don't know who initiated the call i really don't care who initiated the call but if he called his neighbor to talk about that then that was the most inappropriate time for him to be doing it if his neighbor called him he should have turned around and says hey i'm busy working right now can we talk about this later um so i don't know who initiated the call or anything else all i know is how i felt at the time and how it affected me so when you're in business be very careful about what it is you say what it is that you represent you know be careful about what you represent and how you act um when you're out and about because it can come back and bite you in the butt this guy not going to get any business from me and because on oh, after that they actually went away at one point and came back so he was completely across my driveway and in front of my mailbox and Zephy's up there because it was close to the time that the mail gets delivered and Zephy was up there <laughs> looking out the window waiting for the mail truck to come past so she could get her treat I did not feel safe enough to open my door to allow her to get the treat but they couldn't get to the mailbox because his van was across the mailbox so he was completely across my site instead of being in front of the site he was working on which is where they are supposed to be um i don't know if because he didn't see a car there he thought oh maybe i'm out for the day um or if the guy next door told him that oh she doesn't have a car or something or he just thought oh there's no car there so they don't have a car i can just park here um basically when you're a vendor at a site at a campground you park in front of the vehicle that you're taking care of not the neighbor's one um so his whole professional conduct went out the window and got him blacklisted in the black hole um so it took a, it took a lot of um took some puppy love puppy hugs <laughs> it took a lot of breathing a lot of meditation some more puppy hugs um and actually writing about it um I actually wrote a great i wrote um several pages about it so writing about it helped get it out of my system and then i put into the mastermind group about what had happened um just to say hey you know we're always being told this is you know that we should shop this is what happened and um but yeah so i am now getting off it and i'm going to move on it's done dealt with um so be very careful how you show up that's my thing for that um now i have a question and i put it on my facebook page but nobody's really answered it so i've been watching the been binge watching the program burn notice so i always find some tv series that has been and gone um that i can watch two maybe three episodes each night just as a as a relaxation so i've gotten into watching burn notice i'm now into season four i think it's season four yeah we just started season four um he eats an awful lot of blueberry yogurt do you does anybody else get cravings for blueberry yogurt watching the show it's almost it's almost every time you see him eating he's eating yogurt where he comes into his place and his ex-girlfriend or his mate are sitting there eating his yogurt and that could be the last yogurt that was in the refrigerator but he's always eating seems to be eating yogurt he very rarely eats anything else and so i was sort of curious i was like okay i'm sitting here watching this thing and i got a hankering for blueberry yogurt anybody else found that when they've been binge watching burn notice <laughs> 
to I actually I'm actually enjoying the show. I'm enjoying the concept. It's it's got some good humor in there. But I just noticed this thing about the blueberry yogurt. And I thought, hmm. Wonder when this program was actually being when they were actually showing this program on TV, how many potholes of if they notice an increase in sale of blueberry yogurt. <laughs> I do have yogurt in my fridge. I like buying the big containers. Um because I use it on my cereal in the morning. But um yeah, that was that was funny with the blueberry yogurt. <laughs> um and then the other thing that I've been doing, um, besides working on all my project work and everything else, is that um, at least twice a day, one, at least once a day, if not twice a day, I've started asking questions on my Facebook page. And they've been generating some interesting conversations and some very interesting things. So go check them out. Yesterday, excuse me, um, one of the questions was um, about school. What, what subjects should be taught in school that aren't? And I would tell you the two top answers on that, hands down by far, there's been two answers that have come through the strongest. And I get this question a lot when I have conversations with people and somehow it ends up turning to education. And um, the, this question comes up a lot in a lot of discussions that I have with people. And uh, <laughs> But the two top topics that come up time and time and time again and if you go through the feed, I think there's like about 80 different responses or 90 different responses on this one. The two main topics that you will see repeated time and time again is money. So it's money handling, it's budgeting, it's saving, it's financial planning, um, it's learning how to use money, balance a checkbook, write a check. Um, although checks aren't really written that much anymore, but balancing your accounts, you know, how do you handle, it's basically handling money. Um, and then the second thing is home economics. So learning basic things of meal prep, um, which include things like meal prep, meal planning, um, and just the basic the basic concepts of cooking. Um, even so, even something as simple basic as sewing on a button. Um, so it's been very interesting watching the conversations come in. There's a couple of controversial ones in there, but you know when you look at it, it's sort of like you know that's something that kids need to know. So um, go over and check that question out. And then the other question I put up there yesterday was. What food do you love that a lot of people might think is a little odd? <laughs> That's been getting some, you know, somebody put on there that they like drinking pickle juice. I'm like, that's just one of those foods that send the shiver down the spine. Um, I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Brad would eat my pickles and I would eat his cucumber and his beets. He did not like beets. He did not like cucumber. And if they were on his plates, I got the beets and cucumber. He got all my pickles. And um, hey, as if he just woke up. Hey. <laughs> Somebody, there's one of her doggy friends is out the window at the park. We'll go there in a couple of minutes. You get my shoes? Ziffy, you gonna get my shoes? Bring me my shoes. Come here. Come, here, come up. You know your your little wimpers are getting put on getting put on the video too. Come here. Come here. There you go. Um. Yeah, and so there's been some very interesting foods that come up. And somebody said they wanted to put down Vegemite, but was afraid nobody would know what it was. And I'm so like, I know what that is. I can't stand Vegemite. It is way too salty. I prefer Marmite. And I even put in there that I had one of my um, one of my old school lunch favorites the other day. And uh, that was I'm making a sandwich that had Marmite and salt and vinegar chips on it. Oh, one of my favorite sandwiches I used to like as a kid. And it was a, that was a treat. I did not get it all the time. My mum would make our lunch for us every day. And um, there was the odd time um, for, very, for very special occasions that we would get to um, buy a packet of chips that we could then go put on our to have with our lunch. And uh, so that was my favorite thing to do was Marmite sandwiches with salt and vinegar chips. Um, some people would go, ugh. <laughs> but it was very interesting to see some of the foods that were coming out um, on that list. I mean, okra. I love fried okra. I had it for the first time one time. I was with friends. We were in, somewhere in one of the southern states. And I tried some fried, fried okra, and I thought, that's pretty good. I have tried it other ways and was not a big fan of it. I preferred it fried. Hot fried okra, not cold fried okra. Um, so it was very interesting seeing some of the, um, you know, there was pickle juice, and then eating all the pickles and putting eggs into the pickle juice. Now, I've heard of doing that with beets, where you've got the, um, where you pickle the beets, and then you take the, um, 
the juice from the beets and you put air, hard boiled eggs into them. Um, we get that, you get that if, if you go to, if you're in LA, you got to go to Felipe, uh, Felipe's. They are the inventor of the French dip sandwich. And they have the big jars there of pickled beets. I mean, of pickled eggs. And they're all purple. They come out purple because they've got the in beet pickling juice. And um, they are really, really good. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, their, their French dip sandwich is like, yum. Um, so that's one of the ones. And then the one, one of the one I put in today, which I thought was funny, um, because I am not a fashionista at all. Um, I wear what I find comfortable. If it is restricted in movement, I do not wear it. I do not like wearing it. I guess that's why I didn't do too well in the Air Force when I had to get into uniform and we had these starched shirts that we had to wear. Um, there are parts of my uniforms I liked because they were comfortable and other parts I did not. I did not like having to wear my shirts every day because they were very restrictive in their movement because they were cotton and they had to be starched. Um, <laughs> I think that's why as soon as I go back to barracks, they, they were off the second I walked in the door. <laughs> Tie off, shirt off, put it back into t-shirt. I'm just jeans, t-shirt, yoga pants, shorts, whatever is comfortable, whatever is stretchy. And when the kid, um, when the two older kids got married, I actually found a really pretty dress and it looked good on me. And um, But the whole thing was stretch fabric. I went into Macy's and I said, look, I am the stepmom of the, of the groom. And I need a dress. And I do not like anything that is restrictive. It has to be stretchy. I have to be able to move in it and have to be comfortable in it. And um, and they they bought out this dress and I tried it on. It, the one they bought me was a little snug. The other size they had was a little loose. So they got me it. So they actually ordered me the one that was in between. And it was a perfect fit. It looked amazing. And I was very comfortable the entire time. Um, so that's me when it comes to fashion. I don't care what the latest. Although some fashions I'm sort of like, really? You, know, you make me go... What the heck were they thinking with that one? Um, like some of the stuff out of the 70s, that Paisley stuff. I'm sort of like, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that one was what fa fashion trends would you like to... So the question for today was what fashion trends needs to be brought back? And I thought, needs to be? <laughs> so I thought that was a great question. So it's it's starting to generate some interest on that one. So um, check out some of the... Each day I'm posting at least one, possibly two questions. I might post another one today, um, but um, check out those, look for them, um, feel free to comment on them. Um, there's just some interesting discussions coming up and interesting ideas on courses for kids that, you know, subjects that should be taught. But like I said, the, the leading, by far the leading one is handling money and um, and home economics, basic, like basic cooking skills, basic sewing skills, um, even just like setting a table, doing laundry. Um, things like that. So it's very interesting to see what topic, what other topics are coming up as well. But anyway, that's it from us for today. I'm going to go take Puppy for a walk. Obviously, I need to head to the dog park immediately because one of her friends is obviously over there, judging by her reaction at the window there a couple of minutes ago. So have a super fantastic sparkling evening, and we will catch you guys tomorrow for Winning Wednesday. Hi, Conera. Right, you're going to bring me my shoes, Z?